Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Sling bows actually have a lot of advantages, but they also have disadvantages. Let's talk about the advantages first. First, they are really, really compact. These are probably the most compact arrow shooters on the planet. How can you make something that shoots an arrow smaller than this? <laughs> yeah. Plus also, they can be quite powerful. So this one here is my best design. As you see, it has four theraband gold uh, stri strips per side. This brings up the entire draw weight to about 62 pounds. Amazing that after all these years the bands are still intact. Uh, that's just because I store them in a dark place. And, um, and of course also, as you see, it has this deep tunnel before uh, something hits the whisker biscuit. That is because otherwise the bands will follow through and destroy the whisker biscuit in no time. Here this is decelerated very much. And uh, of course it has to be shot with a with a draw release. So okay. And 62 pounds of course is very significant. So this is not very easy to draw. <laughs> and you can see that the bands did follow up, but they didn't poke out at the end, so the whisker biscuit is kind of unharmed. So I can very easily pull this out and and be ready for the next shot. And here we run into the next problem uh, that sling bows share with normal regular bows, like recurves and compounds, because it takes you quite a long time, specifically when you're not practiced, to be ready for the next shot. You gotta knock the arrow, like so, then you gotta attach the release, and only then are you ready for the next shot. It's not terribly slow, but it is too slow for my taste, because once you are used to the instant sliding Legolas things that let you like ching, ching, you know, then there's no going back to something like this. Then we have the issue of the power. Normally a sling bow is not as powerful as a regular bow, even at the same draw weight, because a normal bow has serious resistance even at this position. So here the resistance is of course zero. There is no draw resistance at this point. Only when you start pulling it out, then you build up resistance. So therefore the power stroke of a regular bow has stores more energy than the power stroke of this, simply because the bands will do most of the acceleration in fully drawn out position and almost nothing will be added to the speed of the arrow at this point. So there is a ton of dead play that is very hard to get rid of. A normal slingshot has the same issue but it compensates because it allows you to draw out for a very long distance. Like this Rambone slingshot with a dual layer band. See, a normal bow would end here and the shot would be fairly weak. But my, because of, I have no arrow, that is irrelevant for me. So I can keep drawing it out very, very, very far. And then I can compensate for this dead play by simply drawing it out longer. So the full power acceleration is longer than for a normal bow. However, on a sling bow, you're of course limited by the length of the arrow. This means it will be very dangerous to draw it out any longer because the danger to hit yourself in the hand would be way too high. So I could only shoot like this length and more would simply not be possible. Yeah, and shooting this without a proper arrow guide, of course, is uh, horribly inaccurate. In order to overcome all the limitations without losing the advantages of a sling bow versus a regular bow, I've been going back to my sliding Legolini design that in this version here is actually something that you can print on your own 3D printer if you have one, or if you happen to know someone who has one. Because Lukasz Janukowski, a genius 3D designer, <laughs> has actually published the plans for it for free. So uh, you can find a link how to download the SDL file from down below. Since this thing actually uses rubber, of course, and the rubber is also pretensed. See, this is the relaxed length of the rubber. So as you see, it's already been stretched to maybe factor two or something. There's a lot of pre-stretch in it. And this is uh, probably one of the coolest uh, bow and arrow toys that I've ever seen. Even though, because I loaded the very deadly broadheads, razor sharp broadheads into it. It's definitely a very dangerous toy. <laughs> and you can you can aim with the red dot sight and with the laser. Today is daylight, so therefore probably it's better to use uh, the red dot.
<laughs> a lot of fun. But of course the power is not sufficient. To be a serious bow it needs to really have more power. So I've been thinking why not just making it bigger, but not using a much longer sliding magazine for a longer draw and why not also extending the bow part here. But then we are losing one of the big advantages because then it would be no more compact than a normal bow. So I, I went back into an older project of mine and it was the Instant Kyudo Master where I converted a longbow, a Japanese longbow, a Yumi bow, to a sliding instant Legolas device and it worked fine but of course it is, it's a huge weapon and it is, has this really long magazine for a really really long power stroke but it also has this very long bow itself. Meet the instant Kyudo master. <laughs> Let me show you its features. <laughs> so it's very awkward and clumsy to transport. So how we ca can we make a sling bow that still has pretension, but on the other hand is much easier to transport? Well, I think we could simply make these limbs folding so that they fold away on transportation. So I simply took the longest sliding instant Legolas that I've ever built for the Yumi bow <laughs> and uh, removed it from the bow without any change so I could reattach it at any time and now I simply have to make a folding rubber based contraption for it and then also replace the string with a rubber band set. So can we do it? I think we can. Let me show you what I came up with. So meet the folding rubber powered sliding instant Legolas. <laughs> Let me show you its features. <laughs> as you see it has now TheraBand silver uh, as a power source, giving the bow about 45 pounds of a draw resistance. Um, and okay, like so. And of course it benefits from the huge draw length that this gives you. This actually draws out a lot more far than a normal bow would allow you to do because you're independent from the length of the arrow. Actually this thing shoots bolts that are only 15 inches long and they shoot quite nicely. Oops, <laughs> that was a bit low. <laughs> okay, one more. All right, he and cock it on an empty magazine because the lever catches it. It is really super easy to collapse this whole thing because first of all you can slip off the bands in no time and you can also leave them on. And, and then you have these levers here in the front and as you see that part I had to do in metal, in aluminum actually, because um, the, this actually there's a lot of forces are concentrated on this point here and I first made them in wood but it wouldn't hold, it would simply break just because you have so much power because of the long levers here that um, you need metal instead of wood. And actually these lock simply like this. So if I press on this they swing in and I can move in the bow limb and then they automatically lock in place like here. And the same goes for the other side. So at any time I can collapse it like this and then it's actually very easy to transport this since it almost co entirely collapses. Very portable. <laughs> it doesn't have an aiming device but it would be super easy to attach a red dot or a laser or something. But it is also fun without. But as you saw, I just ran into a very big disadvantage. The mechanical forces are not to be underestimated. As you can see, one of the screws that is holding these things in place simply sheared off from the force 
and that also led to the folding in of this uh, throwing arm. So actually these things are kind of tricky and it is, it is really a challenge to build them in a way that they are solid. Therefore I've been thinking, is this really the solution? Can this be, ouch, 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 <laughs> can this be actually made safer and still have all the advantages? Hmm, well, I was thinking, what happens when I simply take these arms, fold them to the front and fix them in place so they are no longer foldable? So that when I move this thing all the way forward, they would be in line with the instant Legolas magazine box anyway, so they wouldn't add any additional bulk. Hmm, hmm, can it be done? I think so. Let me show you what I came up with. And this is it. <laughs> The Slingbow Lance Repeater. <laughs> Let me show you its features. So as you can see, this now has like a pistol grip here. And um, it also has this long fork that makes sure that the rubber is pretense, just like on the regular bow arms, like the swinging bow arms. So there is plenty of pretension here already. And the magazine box is still the same from the instant Kyudo Master. <laughs> so there's still Japanese signs on it. But now the bands are much longer since it has the same very long, like 31 inches of a power stroke. But it also now has a huge draw length extension. So this is like a super, super long version of a slingshot. See, normally a bow would end like here. But I can keep on drawing out like here. And you see how under, mu under much tension this now is. And when I shoot, the rubber can use the entire acceleration length. And I can easily repeat. <laughs> Serious power. This is probably the most powerful rubber-based uh, sling bow that I've ever seen. Can't cock it on an empty magazine. Five shots. <laughs> I could load in one more, but you know, the manufacturer only recommends five. <laughs> this clearly has more power than the one with the regular bow arms. And that has two reasons. Uh, first of all, the rubber is longer since the stretch is longer. So see, this is the rubber length in relaxed condition. And this is the rubber band set for the regular bow arms. As you can clearly see, it's a lot shorter. It's actually, I would say, it's like a good 10 centimeters shorter. And the, the more rubber you have in fully stretched out condition, of course, the more physical power goes into cocking them. And this physical power you can harvest in shot energy later on. So clearly this is better for that reason, but also because, see, the vectors are much more straight into the direction of the flight of the arrow. Uh, think about if you want to, let's say, pull a wrecked car out of a ditch and you have two oxen. You know, if you, if you let the oxen just draw in like a 45 degree angle, right, then of course the vectors won't be aligning. You would actually want the oxen to be as close together as possible to really move the thing in the same direction and not just in opposite directions, because they're going, that's going to eat some energy away. So because of the better vector alignment and because of the additional amount of rubber that is fully stretched, this has more energy. Now, of course, people will come again and say, why not just using rollers to extend it even more? Because rollers, this is a really negative thing. What I've learned when making slingshots for all these years is that tensed rubber, under no circumstances, should touch anything 
uh, hard because it's very vulnerable in stretched out condition and will will suffer immensely from such physical contact. So you don't want that. Also, the rollers create friction and um, friction, and also they require energy to move additional mass. So rubber is really most efficient when it's running freely without ever touching anything. It's going to last longer and it's going to deliver more energy to the shot. Second, rollers wouldn't make this any more compact. See, this draw length in, in, in collapsed mode, like this, would not really make it any more compact. In fact, it would be more bulky because then I would have to add a construction underneath here. So, In fact, I could even make it longer. I could do this pre-stretch up to here, like to here, without making it any more awkward to transport. Well, this now, of course, has very nice balance and you can very easily just use it and if you ever want to shoot with it, that can be done within a very short amount of time. <laughs> it's always ready for action. So, what do I think about this? I believe this clearly is the best rubber-based homemade weapon that I've ever uh, designed. Just because it has everything. It has high shot frequency, it has high energy of the shot, it has accuracy. Could easily attach a red dot to it, of course, no problem. Um, it just has everything that you possibly want from a weapon like this. Uh, plus also, it is entirely made from uh, plywood and other material that you can buy anywhere. <laughs> so, the repeating sling bow lance. One of the coolest inventions I think that I've ever presented to you on this channel. And I hope you like this video because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks and bye. Uh, one more, <laughs> as always. Bye! <laughs>